Friends, good morning. Welcome to this service of worship at Edgewood Presbyterian Church. I know many of you, but um, for the new faces, I'm Elizabeth Goodrich. I'm a minister member of the Presbytery of Shepherds and Lapsley, and for your purposes today, I am not Joe. Um, <laughs> Joe is homesick, and um, while I'm sorry about the occasion, I will say it is always a joy and a delight to share in worship with you. Um, so I extend a welcome um, to those of you who are worshiping with us in person, and also um, to those of you who are worshiping with us online. As we begin, please rise in body or spirit and join Richard in the call to worship. For forty days and nights the rain fell, and the waters covered the face of the earth. Yes, the Lord. For 40 years, the people wandered, seeking the land of God's promise. Yes, the Lord, from death to life. Moses spent 40 days on the mountain, learning the commandments of God. Yes, the Lord, from death to life. Elijah traveled 40 days in the wilderness to hear the voice of God in the silence. Yes, Jonah cried out to the people of Nineveh, Repent, or in forty days you will perish. Yes, the Lord, from death to life. Jesus fasted and prayed for forty days and was tested by the devil. Yes, the Lord, from death to life. Let us pray. Almighty God, your son fasted forty days in the wilderness and resisted the temptation to abandon his path. Give us grace to direct our lives in obedience to your spirit, that as you know our weaknesses, so we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you.
The Apostle Paul writes, In the name of Christ, I urge you, be reconciled to God, trusting in God's grace. Let us confess our brokenness together. Let us pray. God of mercy, you sent Jesus Christ to seek and save the lost. We confess that we have strayed from you and have turned aside from your way. We have failed in love, neglected justice, and ignored the truth. Have mercy, O oh God, and forgive our sin. Return us to paths of righteousness through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Listen now to our penitent calls. So that you may live. The steadfast love of the Lord never fails. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are, we are forgiven and restored to new life. Let us pray. Gracious God, our way in the wilderness guide us by your word through these 40 days and minister to us with your Holy Spirit so that we may reformed, restored, and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The gospel lesson comes from Mark's first chapter. Listen for the good news. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descended like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the gospel for the people of God. Our second scripture reading this morning comes from the Psalms. This is Psalm 25. Listen now for the word of God. <coughs> to you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my enemies exult over me. Do not let those who wait for you be put to shame. Let them be ashamed who are wantonly treacherous. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation, and for you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. 
According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore God instructs sinners in the way. God leads the humble in what is right and teaches the humble the way of the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep God's covenant and decrees. For your name's sake, O Lord, pardon my guilt, for it is great. Who are they who fear the Lord? God will teach them the way that they should choose. They will abide in prosperity, and their children shall possess the land. The friendship of the Lord is for those who fear God, and the Lord makes God's covenant known to them. My eyes are ever toward the Lord, for God will pluck my feet out of the net. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. Consider how many are my foes and with what violent hatred they hate me. O oh, guard my life and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. Redeem Israel, O oh God, out of all of its troubles. Holy wisdom, holy Lord. Thanks be to God. Back in the days when I was preaching regularly, I developed a discipline that worked pretty well for me. At some point after church on Sunday, but before I went to bed that night, I'd read and maybe write down the preaching text for the coming week. I didn't do anything else with it at that point, just got it in mind. And I found over time that if I had the text playing in my head, the spirit pretty reliably served up anecdotes and tidbits throughout the week that made the actual writing and interpreting much easier. It's kind of a preacher's Easter egg hunt every week. Well, y'all, it turns out that the spirit works behind the scenes even when we are not paying attention. And I know this. I learned it all over again yesterday when Joe texted me to say he had COVID and needed a preacher. I love coming here and Joe has done me more favors than I could ever count, so of course. Plus I thought I had a good Psalm sermon lying around that I could rework. I didn't. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> But then I remembered two articles that caught my attention this week. I didn't know I was going to need them today, but it turns out the spirit is at work even when we think she's busy doing other stuff. The first article has a headline, 10 Reasons to Program a Lazy Day into Each Week. Well, this made me chuckle a bit because we're actually commanded to do that. You'll remember we call it Sabbath but it's probably the most ignored of the Ten Commandments these days. I know very few people who take an actual day of rest each week. And we know very well that this is to our detriment. The article went on to list all of the excellent reasons that God has already thought of that this is a good idea, and they're exactly what you'd imagine. A day of rest boosts creativity, it reduces stress, it improves productivity, it enhances physical health, nurtures relationships, promotes self-care, offers perspective, improves work-life balance, and fosters personal growth. The article was completely secular, but it's hard to miss the fact that these reasons all have profound spiritual benefits as well. 
It's simply harder to see God at work in the world and in our lives if we're moving through life at breakneck speed or completely distracted by the demands and entertainments of our lives. You already know this. And the second article was a blog post from a Presbyterian minister, Francis Watman Rosenau, titled Daydreaming for Lent. She opens by quoting Tricia Hersey of the Nap Ministry. Tricia wrote the book, Rest is Resistance, and the book opens with these words. I wish you rest today. I wish you deep knowing that exhaustion is not a normal way of living. You are enough. You can rest. You must resist anything that doesn't center your divinity as a human being. You are worthy of care. And she goes on to reflect on how she remembers daydreaming as a child and over time noticing that opportunities to daydream happened less and less. Maybe your experience is similar. Percy describes daydreaming as similar to downloading. And Rosenau points out that this is helpful imagery because it makes the shift from wandering to receiving, giving our minds space not only to breathe, but also to problem solve, to discover, to create. Then the sentence that stopped me cold Busy people never have epiphanies. I find myself longing for time and for space when I hear that. I want to have epiphanies. I bet you do, me too. So Frances Rose now is taking up daydreaming as her practice for Lent. She's going to do her best to trust that God is in control and that by leaning into something that doesn't come easily to her, she might discover a bit of blissful freedom in being relieved of responsibilities that probably weren't hers anyway. I think she's on to something. All of this reminds me of one of my children's second grade teachers. On parents' night, as we eagerly tucked our grown-up bodies into tiny little desks, she quieted us. And she said, I remember this so well. I have been teaching second grade longer than most of you have been alive. I can get everything done that needs to get done in a day. I do not assign homework to my students, but I have an assignment for you. Your homework is to make sure that your children read and play outside if possible. That's it. They need to sit on a rock and think their own thoughts. If you do your part and I do my part, it's going to be a great year. And it was. She was right. And I can't tell you how many times I have thought about her wise words through the years, how much I have longed for that time when we were up late working on a project or when the stress of it all just seemed like too much. And I wondered if my kids wouldn't be better off just having some time to daydream. I offer these Easter eggs to you as encouragement on your Lenten journey. As a congregation, you've chosen the theme of pause and you will be concentrating on the Psalms. Psalm 25 is as good a place as any to start. It's an acrostic, which a better scholar would spend more time understanding and explaining. But what is important to know is that the Psalm is built around a literary convention rather than a theological one. So it touches many themes that you will hear repeated in the Psalms. It's almost like the greatest hits. Learning from God, trusting in God, waiting for God, petitioning God. Things you simply cannot do if your head, spirit, 
and calendar are twofold. So I too wish you rest. I wish you a season of holy pauses and deep breaths, a season of daydreams and being centered in your own belovedness. The Psalms will faithfully guide you as they have so many who have gone before us. In the name of Jesus, who is both the word made flesh and the one in whom we find our rest. Amen. <laughs>
peace of Christ be with you. And also in you, let us share signs of the peace of Christ with one another. That's enough peace. <laughs> I have just a few announcements today. Um, after worship, we will have our usual Sunday school classes for kids and adults. There will also be a team in the kitchen preparing lunches for Feed Your Neighbors. And Alice Morgan asked me to let you all know that there is a need for someone to deliver the lunches tomorrow. So if you have Availability to do that, Alice will be eager to talk to you after worship. I'm um, also at 12:15. The women's group is starting the Sacred Encounters Bible study. Even if you don't have the study, you are welcome to join in. Um, next Sunday is the next meeting of the EPC Book Club, discussing A is for Alabaster by Anna Carter Florence. They'll meet at 12.15, and I'll just give a shameless plug that Anna Carter Florence is going to be at Thank You Books on the evening of Thursday, March 8th, doing a talk on um, this same book. So I hope to welcome some of you there. She was my preaching professor in seminary and is really one of my heroes of the faith. So I'd love to introduce you to her. Um, finally, I'll say as the ushers prepare to receive the offering, I want to remind you that you can give to the church online. The information about how to do that is in the back of your worship folder. Anything else for the good of the order?
friends, Jesus said, come to me, all, you, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for, my, for I am gentle and humble in heart. Friends, this is the Lord's table. Jesus, who was always a guest, is host at this table. And he invites each one of us to come to the feast that he has prepared. Let us pray. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift up the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks this morning, O oh God, for the many blessings of this life, for the guidance of our mothers and fathers in the faith, for the gift of the Psalms, and for this good creation. We give you thanks and praise for the faithful of every time and every place. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. God, pour out your Holy Spirit on these your gifts of bread and cup, that the bread we break and the cup we bless might be for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ until he comes again. With boldness we pray, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day your daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus was at supper with friends, and after giving thanks to God, he took bread and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Eat this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup saying, this cup is the cup of a new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. Drink of this, all of you, and remember me. Friends in Christ, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim our Lord's saving death and resurrection until he comes again. And he has promised he will come again. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Is this one?
the bread of life given for you. The bread of life given for you. David, the bread of life given for you. This is the bread of life given for you. bread of life given for you. Apparently you were scary at all. <laughs> this is the bread of life given for you. The bread of life given for you, Shana. The bread of life given for you. This is the bread of life given for you. This is the bread of life given for you. The bread of life given for you. Well, the bread of life given for you. This is the bread of life given for you. It's the bread of life given for you. The bread of life given for you. This is the bread of life given for you, Amanda. This is the bread of life given for you. This is the bread of life given for you. The bread of life given for you, Amanda. This is the bread of life given for you. Given for you, dear. I need the bread of life given for you. The bread of life given for you. Do you have one other um, prayer concern that is not in your bulletin? And that is that the husband, oh gosh, I left it in the pulpit. I'm going to move to the pulpit. Prayer concern that came from Sid Burgess. Um, prayers for Jonathan Fuller, the husband of Julie Stewart, who had a mild stroke. At home recovering. Um, the prayers that you have sent in will be added to the prayer list, and um, with those and all of the other joys and concerns of our hearts, let us pray. Your response to lead us, O Lord, will be from death to life. Jesus, remember us when you come into your kingdom. Lead us, O Lord. Lead us, O Lord. For your church around the world, we ask new life. Lead us, O Lord. O Lord. For all who carries out, carry out ministries in your church, we ask grace and wisdom. Lead us, O Lord. O Lord. For people who have accepted spiritual disciplines this Lenten season, we ask inspired discipleship. Lead us, O Lord. From death to life. For Christians in every land, we ask new unity in your name. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. For Jews, Muslims, and people of all faiths, we ask your divine blessing. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. For those who cannot believe, we ask your faithful love. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. For governors and rulers of every land, we ask your guidance. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. For people who suffer and sorrow, we ask your healing peace. Lead us, O Lord, from death to life. God of love, as in Jesus Christ you gave yourself to us, so may we give ourselves to you, living according to your holy will. Keep our feet firmly on the way where Christ leads us. Make our mouths speak truth, truth that Christ teaches us. 
fill our bodies with new life that Christ is within us. For it is in his holy name we pray. Amen. Friends in Christ, go in peace. Seek out rest. Find time for Sabbath and for spending time listening to God and paying attention. Give yourselves permission to pause during this holy season of Lent, trusting that God will make space for you, tend to the things that you would be doing otherwise. And as you go, May the grace of our Lord, the love of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit attend you now and always. Amen. Amen.